Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Out of Focus. We are still continuing with our beauty series. Today we'll be looking at how the beauty industry is affecting even those who are wearing hijab. It is understood that many women who wear hijab would wear it in, from obedience to Allah's command. So when wearing hijab, the yardstick shouldn't be how fashionable or glamorous one looks, but is it the case? To discuss this further, we have Sister Zara, who is a head teacher of an Islamic school, and also she had an experience in Asian beauty industry. Sister Zara, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister Zara, mm -hmm. one interesting thing we see, alhamdulillah, a lot of young women nowadays taking up hijab, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But how is the fashion or beauty industry is affecting this um, wearing of hijab? <coughs> By hijab, I mean head covering, really. Right, I mean, we, you can understand, you know, alhamdulillah, a lot of sisters are starting to you know, embrace the deen, mashallah, in, in whatever stage they're in. But what they have is the impact of the pressure from society, mm -hmm. that they cannot be obviously expressing themselves to reach that beauty, you know, um, at its full, what society, you know, translates as, mm -hmm. you know, what we see on TV or the common magazines. So they will do their best to use the tools that they have and try to glorify or beautify as much as they can. And therefore, you see, you know, nowadays, tutorials of, you know, how to do your hijab. And there's, you know, a title for a certain type of hijab. So much so that, you know, you're, you, you know, you, you, I mean, come on, you're going to be following tutorials in a hijab to do a hijab. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the pressures that have made an impact that everyone has a style now. Mm -hmm. There's this wave of styles and fashion within the hijab so that they can become acceptable so they are so called looking presentable and beautiful so they will have you know i don't know like you said the you know the big massive layer upon layer hijab camel hump, we camel hump which we call it and then you will have some that will have the hijab not that i watch it but this is you know i've seen you know, some with bows and mm. so much so that it looks like a Sikh's turban. You know, so there's a whole lot of definition of different elements of mm. what they presume to be beautiful hijab, as mm. in the um, the covering of the head to the, mm. the bosom. You know. But why is this happening? Why is there a different styles of hijab for um, it's beautiful they, they, they're trying. They're actually trying to express themselves or right. reach that epitome of beauty which they are feeling the pressure. You have to understand, you know, the women and girls growing up in Britain, in Western society, you know, you're surrounded by it. You know, you go into the shopping malls to, you know, you know, like I say, ads, magazine, you walk, you know, where you walk, everywhere, you know, you have constant images bombarded at you and you will have an impact, you know, a, as you want to express back. Mm. And the only reason is that is because you haven't had Islam itself penetrate your heart. Mm -hmm. Because had the values from Islam penetrate your heart, you wouldn't, it, it would have a less of an impact. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't care how your hijab looks and should it look a certain style. Because your values are prescribed by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us mm -hmm. in Surah Noor. Yeah. Um, one thing you have mentioned that um, it's a lot of time people see what is outside. There's a lot of bling, a lot of fashion going on. And um, obviously for young Muslim women, they feel they need to fit in. And it purely uh, uh, could be that it is a fashion, sort of like fashion consciousness. Conscious. But also I think sometimes in the media, hijab is seen as oppressive. So sometimes people smartening it up and beautifying it, showing that it is not an uh, uh, it is not oppression. So. Sometimes there, it could it's be probably their way of I presenting, yeah. presenting or expressing themselves or making a statement. I don't think that should be correct because the whole idea of hijab is to free you from that mm. from that oppressive state, and you know is trying to explain. You know, Islam has given that as a tool for us, so that you know it's uniform, so that the real beauty which is in our intellect yeah. will shine out. Yeah. You know, so that one could know us for who we are. Uh, so that you know, 
we are valuable then, mm -hmm. not because of wh how we should fit in, because society is thinking that it's a so oppressive, so that mm -hmm. let me de -glam you know, glamorize it a bit and de islamicize it so that I may fit in to the point that it's just a hat, mm -hmm. you know, and your neck show. I mean, is it, is it a hijab? I mean, you have to measure it and, you know, you, you don't take that measurement of hijab and beautification of is it a hijab from YouTube? It's what set by, you know, Islamic principles and what Rasulullah has advised us and, you know, how we have given by, you know, the words of Allah. Yeah. So but what about as young sister might see this um, fashionable hijab and she might feel inspired to take up the hijab and feel that, okay, she looks fab, so I should practice it as well. Could be a stepping stone towards wearing the full covering. Uh, the inspiration could be, I mean, I understand the inspiration could be being fashionable, then, you know, then start wearing hijab. I mean, what, they've taken it on from a fashion perspective? Yes, or it could be like uh, that sister wearing hijab looks fashionable, looks, you know, mashallah, fab, fab, so I should do it as well. I mean, I mean, I mean we don't see much of that. I mean, you see the 1920s, and women used to wear that bonnet, or if you go to the Victorian times back then, you know, they had an element of covering their head. So uh, I don't know how much, but it's all to do with the circle of friends and how much impact they have, mm -hmm. and the impact of someone coming into or probably stepping into you know the path of Islam should more or less be you know the the characteristics that one shows and that, is, that shines out with you know that would inspire someone to come into Islam but I can understand when when it's taken on first mm -hmm. as a hijab you know some people do evolve slowly mm -hmm. into the path of Allah mm -hmm. and Obviously, there's no pressure, and nobody's right, and nobody's saying that you know she should be looked down upon because she's only just got the hijab, and you know the abaya is not there, or you know it's obviously allowing that subtle, slow movement and gracefully mm -hmm. bringing them into the path mm -hmm. by. But you somebody could and argue that you don't want. Yes, somebody could argue that you don't want to get stuck in that position, isn't it? Not moving forward, and also you don't want to dilute Islam to be more uh, you know to to make Islam more appealing yes. Islam is what is Islam of course um, also another thing I wanted to touch on that um, sometimes sisters might feel wearing hijab and jilbab it's like um, you are losing that identity of your own styles so sometimes they want to be unique they want to have their own styles so they are bringing their own styles into hijab um, that could right. compromise I mean when you compromise the deen of the uniform that has been prescribed to to us whether we're men or women because mm -hmm. we both have uniform that allah has dictated in the quran you know you, you know for men we know up to the na knee mm -hmm. navel to the knee for women you know head to toe mm -hmm. um, we we shouldn't be diluting it because when we start diluting what's been commanded upon how much of s submission have we done mm -hmm. and in, you know, it's quite insulting, uh, you know, for us to, you know, stoop down to dilute it so that we meet society's values and fitting in where upon we've taken that oath to when we took on our shahada or when we come into Islam, that when we embrace, you know, come into the community of Muslims, we've, we've joined the membership, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of saying that, you know, I submit yes. wholly fully mm -hmm. you know the word Muslim itself is a verb mm -hmm. it denotes an action and it's a complete submission so when you're completely submitting and you're adhering to the you know the words of Allah and allow it to empower into your life it should make an impact and nothing else should matter mm -hmm. no other value should matter because that should impact into your life and will entail you to you know act accordingly so you mm -hmm. shouldn't be you know you know, trying to dilute it because yeah. society thinks that, oh, you are, you, you, you know, Muslim women are oppressive, you know, therefore, da, da, da. So I am going to, you know, make it a slightly beautifying, westernize my hijab so that they think I am not an oppressed woman. That's not where the statement comes from. The statement sure. is you to feel who you are mm -hmm. and to feel happy for who you are, that you, yes, you are proud to be a Muslim and there's nothing wrong with it mm -hmm. because you should be seen for, yourself right you know which Allah empowers you and yeah. and, and it's it's a powerful feeling yeah. that you'll only get once you embrace the values that you know has been given by you know you know Islam yes 
I think um, when we are doing an action for the sake of Allah, how can you feel insecure? Of course. And um, also when we say hijab, it is Islamically, it means the full covering, full yes. it's a state of being as well, of course. Um, which we understand like parda, isn't it, like a screen. But himar is the headscarf. So slowly, slowly, I find that this um, definition of hijab has been blurred. And now this hijab is just a headscarf, which is not the correct term to no. use al as well. Um, how does Islam define this uh, Islamic dress code? I mean, we, Allah tells us in the Quran, in, in both Surah Nur and Surah Azab, you know, so prof O Prophet, tell your believing, you know, tell your wives and the believing women to draw upon a cloak and, you know, to cover um, from head to up to their bosom and also up to from their shoulders to their toes, you know, and there's certain criteria because some may think, you know, um, in, uh, and, and the, the, the objective is given, but if you look at also, you know, nowadays with the fashion wave, you know, there's certain styles of covering. You may see you know, abayas that look like fitted dress with belts, yeah. you know, or that defies the whole concept. But the word abaya, you know, I if you use the yardstick of measuring it, mm. it shouldn't be see-through, it shouldn't be um, tight-fitted, it shouldn't be... Um, resembling uh, 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 the opposite gender's yeah. clothing. It shouldn't be um, resembling uh, another uh, religious uh, embodiment, you know. And once you have that measurement there and those criteria set, then that is it. It should be loose yes. and it should be, you know, you know, up to the, you know, covering top to um, bottom. Draping down to the floor. Uh, draping, draping down to the floor. With one piece of cloth, isn't it? Yes. One and, um, and there you will you will fulfill the role of you fitting the uniform which Allah has given us, you know, so that we can protect ourselves, mm -hmm. so that we are happy in that state. Yeah. I think sometimes we need to have this yardstick of, you know, how to wear hijab um, in a proper way. Otherwise, we might have the false understanding and um, a, a false idea and sense of we are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we don't, then we don't fall into that, isn't it? We are just trying to make ourselves happy or fitting into the fashion rather than what we are, why we are doing this for. <coughs> um, how would you say, I understand a lot of sisters, it's, it's a journey to obey mm. the you know, full requirement of Islamic dress code. How would you show them the support? How would you... Um, you know, without being, okay, you, what you're doing is not hijab, what you're doing, this is haram. Yeah. Uh, how should we come across? I mean, across? we shouldn't portray, you know, our deen in a way like, don't do this, don't do that, you know, and everything is don't, don't, don't. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, everything is permissible. Mm -hmm. You know, living an Islamic way of life is so easy because everything is mubah and allowed, mm -hmm. you know, and we should embrace it in a way that our conduct and our characteristics will help and assist people who are coming into the early stage in their journey towards the path of Allah. So you shouldn't be looking down and say, right, this was wrong, this is right. In fact, you should assist them in their spiritual life into understanding so that they can connect to the Creator. Because once they've found that connection and that relationship, everything else will follow. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to attack them or try to look down upon them and try to correct their external image you know you know just by saying oh this wasn't correct they would they would move away I mean, for myself i mean back in those days if someone came to me and said oh you have to wear hijab or oh, this is a book do this do that i'd probably run a mile i would know but it's just because it happened internally so your impact should be internally you know so that you you know the values penetrate through your heart so then it will have an impact on your you know you, you know on the outside elements and then you will embrace you will want to please the lord because who are we here to please we're only here to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you want to please allah you would want to do exactly what he has ordained us in the quran and he has given you know the beautiful quran you know to us so that we you know his wise words will empower us of course you know mm -hmm. and 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 that's what is there for the quran itself is a tool you know that empowers us yes. so that we can live this life and that this short journey of this life in this dunya so we can then get to our eternal paradise and maybe then obviously you know 
then you can do what you want because that's where paradise is. Yes, in yeah. a way, we don't have that prescription of you know certain uniform. <laughs> I think. Um, uh, obviously, like you said, the rules and regulation are in the Quran, and uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has told us how to do these certain things. But at the same time, if we remember that um, when we are giving somebody advice, we do it with kindness. Yes, we course. understand and uh, we show empathy to people because it's a struggle. It could be a journey for a lot yeah. of people. We have been there in the past yes, as well, and I for us even, it, we are still it on a journey, a journey. And who knows that our journey hasn't finished it yet? No. So, uh, being kind, kind towards people, giving the nasiha in a best of manner yeah. as well. This is quite important as well, rather than you know being well, what you're doing is wrong. This is not hijab. Yeah. Uh, because this is not helpful at all. No, because Islam itself, you know, you know, alhamdulillah. From the time the Rasulullah and the Sahabas, so. you know, when when they conquered Medina and they established it as a state, you know, from that day onwards, it didn't spread through violence mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. It spread through dialogue and debate and through the characteristics, mm -hmm. you know, and the kindness and the gracefulness and the adab and the akhlaq that others looked at them and then they, you know, they embraced it. Mm -hmm. And that's how it should carry on through our own actions. You know, that someone would say, well, that is beautiful, you know, you know, look at this person and, and, and this is how we will win the yes. hearts of others, yes. you know, and, and this is how we should carry on. Yeah. But at the same time, we state what is, what is the uh, right thing to do. Because sometimes we could feel like, okay, I'm going to leave her to it, she's on a journey, and not giving the right nasiha, no, not no, the course. right you advice. Just, you don't um, just leave someone. Yeah. You need to, you know, if every one of us was, you know, like them would, you know, Ansar and the Muhajirun and yeah. all that at that time, um, we need to partner up. Of course. Yeah. Because the, we are seen as flag bearers of Islam. Yes. You know, obviously we don't have the Sahabas. Yeah. You know, Rasulullah has passed away and we don't have Sahabas and we're not going to have anyone else coming in. We are living flag bearers, you know, and we should forbid the evil and enjoin in the ma'roof and encourage, you know, and show and demonstrate, you know, to others, you know, you know the beauty of Islam yes. in its path so that they can accept it and you know join us gracefully mm -hmm. and you know we we need to um, assist any sisters uh, who are finding it hard or in the early stages and you know encourage them yes. and gi give them nasiha you know you embrace them into your family or your network because it is hard coming out of a social network mm -hmm. I mean I remember the peer group that I was with and the circle of friends I was with, you know, it, uh, then would not have assisted yeah. me to my journey where I am now yes. and to the life I'm living now. So you need to come into another circle and you don't, it's sometimes it's hard from an outsider to come into the circle of friends because you don't know who to go to. So okay. we, as flag bearers, we need to embrace that person because they are willing, they are asking to come in. You know, but it's just knowing that. So it's a responsibility on all of us to, you know, be empathetic. Yeah. You know, a lot of young um, modern Muslim women they are going into school, college, universities. They are going to work, which means that they need to dress in a certain way or look presentable. How do we see? You know, does wearing hijab means you appear? You know, your appearance shouldn't. You shouldn't take care of your appearance. You should dress badly and not take care of how you, you oh, know, appear mean, in public? I mean, you can be smart. You know, there's nothing wrong with being smart, but then you don't compromise your, your, your deen. You know, you cannot compromise that. And we need to ensure that we adhere to the, you know, to the rules that set out mm -hmm. for us. And, and, and we can happily, gracefully take that on and go to these, we, we go to our work or college or wherever we need to be, you know, you don't need to fit in. If something ha has to make you change the way you look, you know, and will allow you to compromise, then maybe you need to rethink your life. Well, is this the right, you know, place for me to be in? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's the sincerity of doing, um, for doing an action. And there is nothing wrong smartening it up mm -hmm. as long as you have fulfilled the, you know, basic criteria of wearing um, wearing the Islamic dress mm. code. For example, I was thinking that um, sort of like jacket style mm. jilbab is in quite in fashion, like, you know, 
it, it does fulfill the, yeah, but it, it just has got buttons or a different, little bit of different color. Yeah. That's acceptable. Yeah. So as long as you fulfill the basic commandments, then there is a yeah. room for... Of course, nobody is here to judge. And your actions are only judged by Allah in, through your intentions. You know, and, you know, like I say, you know, you know, you know, every act could be an act of ibadah where you can get, you know, you know, rewarded for. But if you're doing it, it's who you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. you know, and Allah, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept an action which is not solely for him. Mm -hmm. So if yes. you're doing it for Islam, it has to be for him. And this is the conscious decision you make. Mm -hmm. And every time you scrutinize when we are doing something, that um, why we are doing it. And once we once we understand and can satisfy mm -hmm. ourselves that we are doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it the fashion, then we know why we are doing this. And that will, you know, uh, when we have the insecurity or not mm -hmm. confidence uh, for doing certain action, hopefully our understanding, then it will be clarified. Um, what about when the sisters are, um, you know, you, you talked about thinking about how they should um, uh, sort of dress up and think about their appearance. Um, how would they convey as in like they wouldn't come across as wearing something? Um, some people might say, oh, what you're doing is still not Islamic. How would they answer to, uh, to people who, who are saying that what you're doing is not Islamic? M meaning someone who's not practicing or somebody who is practicing telling a person that what you're doing is not Islamic how would they answer well, it's I a difficult I question to difficult ask and question, difficult question to answer it's not the correct way mm -hmm. that's not dawah mm -hmm. if if so when you were taking basically an advice how would you take that advice I mean the advice is I mean nobody should be going up to someone else and saying don't do this and this is not how it should be it should be done in a way let you assist their journey or even introduce it in a way you can't just go up to someone and say put on a scarf mm -hmm. this is what you need to do mm -hmm. or you've just done it wrong it mm -hmm. could be that's their first step mm -hmm. and in that first step if what you say you know um, is quite harsh that you may probably do more damage and sh it might put that sister off because you she will see you as you know you know you're already covered mm -hmm. but this is your characteristic as in you're very harsh you know so that's going to you know, someone's going to run away, you know, mm -hmm. from that. So you need to be very gentle and embracing and understanding uh, and yet supportive as well because you yes. don't want to let them linger on and, you know, not provide assistance so that they can, mm -hmm. you know, And sister who received the, the um, advice should think about it as well. Like yeah, when, when I got this advice, what does it mean? Even if that person is harsh or I understand when it, it's hurf hurtful when somebody is giving you advice in a aggressive way but for us to think about hmm let me think about uh, why I'm doing this is there because at the end of the day it's for my own benefit of course and for the person and sister on the other side if someone is giving you an advice there is the reality is rules. just think about it you know you know step back and think about you know who am I you know where what am I doing here you know the the the, the you know the golden W words you know where am I going you know who am I? What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no harm and you don't need to anyone else because it's when you start thinking about those questions that you will start your journey. Because what society is, it's, it's a pressure um, and it's created like a, a, a vacuum where you don't have time to think, sure. you know, and your, you know, technology has taken over your time. You know, you're doing something or other, even if you're on the train, you're on the phone, that you don't have that time to sit back and think, think yeah. of, of those vital questions mm -hmm. so that it can dictate the purpose of your life. You know, because it, you, you, and you, you know, for you sisters out there, you need to be thinking, uh, you know, so that you can move on mm -hmm. and that you have your own chance. I think one of the important things you mentioned is the thinking, that without thinking we are nothing. We mm. have to think for everything, why we do certain things, who do we do it for, mm. who do we want to please. And you said about four, uh, three uh, golden W's yes. that, you know, where Ooh, are we going, where? who are what? we, what are we doing here? Mm. And these are very important questions to mm. answer. Then we will know 
when we are doing certain actions, why we are doing it and yeah. how do we answer for our mm. actions as well. Um, I just wanted to say his hijab is not an, a, a symbol of oppression, neither it prevents women from acquiring knowledge or to contribute in the betterment of the society. And observing the Islamic dress code is a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do it in a proper way. If we are using Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our yardstick, then the insecurity we feel, it will go away and we will inshallah have the confidence and um, uh, secure in our actions and why we do certain things and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for mm -hmm. all of our sisters and like I said it's a journey for all of us mm -hmm. um, may Allah make this journey mm -hmm. um, he accepted from us inshallah mm -hmm. Jazakallah khair uh, sister yeah, Zara and inshallah we'll see you, see you next week Assalamu alaikum